Today, I will be taking you through the world of swing trading. We will start out with the most simple question you can ask, which is what is swing trading? But by the end of the video, you will know how to easily identify extremely high probability and accurate swing trades, and you'll know how to implement those trades better than 95% of traders. If that sounds good, I just need you to do two things for me. One, go ahead and smash that like button. Two, go ahead and hit subscribe if you're new. If you're already a subscriber, welcome back. Let's go ahead and dive into today's video. So first off, let's go through what swing trading is. Swing trading is a style of trading that consists of holding a trade longer than day trading, but not as long as long-term investing. A typical swing trader will hold a trade for somewhere between two days and two weeks. Swing traders primarily use technical analysis, but sometimes add fundamental analysis to that to make high probability and accurate trading decisions. And this is something we'll be talking about how to do a little later on. But first, let's go through what you need to know before you start making high probability and accurate decisions as a swing trader. The first thing you need to know is that you're not going to go out here and start swing trading with your life savings right after watching this video. And you're probably thinking, well, then why am I watching it, Steven? You are watching it because like any other career in the world, your first step is not to go start performing surgery on an individual that needs it. Your first step is not to argue a case in front of a judge. Your first step, if you work for Elon Musk at SpaceX, is not going to be to start building a rocket ship. Your first step is to learn. So this video is meant to show you everything you need to know about swing trading, but your job is to go back test what you learn and practice it until you are completely comfortable and consistent with the concepts and strategies that we're going to be discussing throughout this video. And I'll be explaining a lot more about practicing and backtesting once we go over the rules of the strategy here in just a second. Personally, I am a swing trader in the Forex market, but everything discussed in this video will apply to any market in the world, including crypto, stock market, futures, whatever you trade, the concepts and strategies are going to apply. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the ways you can spot these high likelihood, high probability trades while swing trading. Here what you see is called a candlestick chart. If you're so new that you don't know what a candlestick chart is, there'll be a video that I did a while back in the top right hand corner of the screen that will tell you everything you need to know about these types of charts. We use these as an indication of price direction to make accurate swing trading decisions, but we don't just use candlestick charts. We combine this with other forms of technical analysis to help us make these high probability decisions. Things like moving averages and indicators, Things like structure, support and resistance, candlestick patterns, price action patterns, the list goes on and on. But we find a combination of all of these things that we can set rules around called a strategy. And then we see if that strategy makes money by back testing and practicing with it. And at the point that we're comfortable going live, we then have a much better chance of creating a profitable swing trading career. So now that you know that, let's dive into the strategy. Today, we're going to be focusing on using a moving average, which is gonna be the 50 period moving average, it's the blue line you see on the screen in front of you. Also, we are gonna be using structure and a candlestick pattern in order to create this high probability setup that we're gonna look for to make our accurate swing trading decisions. So let's go ahead and start diving into the rules of this strategy. We'll check out a couple of trades that I took actually using this strategy last week, and then we will go through plenty of examples to make sure you have a complete grasp of the strategy and you can take it, back test it, practice it, and decide if it's something you would like to use in your swing trading arsenal. So let's dive into that right now. So one of my favorite ways to swing trade is by trading with the trend. And what I'm trying to do while trading with the trend and swing trading is I'm trying to capture pullbacks before the next impulsive move up. This is what we call a trending market. Every trending market is going to have these pullbacks. And what I'm trying to capture with the strategy we're going to discuss today is the bottom of these pullbacks before the next big move up and then the bottom of the pullback before the next big move up and then the bottom of the pullback, so on and so forth. That's what I'm trying to capture. So what do I need if that's what I want to capture in terms of rules? Well, I need a rule for trend first, right? I need to make sure that I'm following the trend of the market. And what we're going to do for that is use a uh, exponential moving average. So we're going to type in EMA here on my indicators. It will be the first one that pops up. 
my exponential moving average is going to be set to a 50 length or 50 period. It's going to be the same as chart. I'm going to make it a little bit larger just so it's easier to see. And now I have a defined rule for my strategy in terms of the trend of the market. I need the market to be above the 50 period moving average. And if I'm trying to capture pullbacks, then I probably need a rule for pullbacks too. If you can't see where I'm going yet and you're a complete beginner, when we're building a strategy, the easiest route we're going to have to actually successfully trading that strategy is by creating rules that we can follow every time we place a trade. That's how you stay consistent to your trading plan and to your strategy is by having set in stone rules for every part of that strategy. So again, we have a rule for trend. I wanna see the market above the 50 period moving average. We now need a rule for pullbacks because we're trying to catch the end of pullbacks. So for me, a pullback is anything more than two red candles after a new swing high. So let's zoom in here just in case you're brand new. I wanna make sure that nobody gets left behind here. So right here we have a new swing high, right? Is there more than two candles? Yes, so this would be considered a pullback. Now we have a new swing high, but is this considered a pullback? No, and the reason is because there's not two red candles, but only one. So therefore it's just like a little pause, kind of like this situation right here with this little red candle, that's not a pullback. So my next new swing high is right here. Is this a pullback? Yes, it is. So now I have a rule for a pullback and in terms of catching the end of the pullback, what we're gonna use is a candlestick pattern. So right now I'm gonna go up to a whiteboard and just go over a really brief example of the entire strategy with you. And then we're gonna check out a few examples on real charts to make sure you're comprehending every part of the strategy so you can decide whether or not it's something you wanna put into your swing trading arsenal. So for this strategy, let's color the 50 period moving average blue. So right here, let me grab blue. Let's assume this is the 50 EMA we have on our chart. Okay, there's the 50 EMA. I'm gonna use black for price. So this is what price is doing. Now that we're above the 50 EMA, we've made what? If this was our previous high, we've made a new swing high. Since we've made a new swing high, what's next? We wanna see a pullback, at least two red candles. After we see a pullback, the way I'm going to capture the end of this pullback is by waiting for the market to have a bounce up, create a swing low, then retest that swing low. All while staying above, every bit of this must happen above the 50 period moving average. So if price is staying above the 50 period moving average, we get a new swing high, we push down and get a swing low, then we get a retest of that swing low, then I'm primed to catch the bottom of this pullback before the push higher. And the candlestick pattern I'm gonna use in order to enter a trade in this instance is just what I call a color change. So if we have a retest of this area, then the color that retests it will likely be red. All I'm lo looking for after that is a green candle. So we have this retest of our previous swing low and then we get a green candle. That is the entry. The stop loss is below the swing lows. And what we're trying to capture is that next impulsive move up. So let's do this one more time here. Then we'll dive down into some charts. If you don't understand it yet, don't worry. We're going to go down to the real charts and discuss this strategy in a lot more detail in just a second. So we have our new swing high. What's next? We want to see a pullback. After we get that pullback, we want to see a bounce. That bounce is our swing low. After that bounce, we want a retest of that swing low and a green candle. That green candle, the close of that candle is the entry, stop loss below the swing low. Again, trying to capture that next impulsive move up as the market is trending to the upside, the opposite is true to the downside, which we are gonna look at examples of on charts. So I'm not gonna do that on the whiteboard. That was just a quick overview. Let's actually go down some charts now though and take a look at some real examples of this swing trading strategy. For our first example, we're looking at the Aussie yen and I want you to tell me or leave a comment, what am I looking for right now? What do we have? What has price done? Well, according to our strategy, we need price to be above the 50. Is that rule met? Yes. We need a swing high and we define that swing high as a high that then has two red candles. Those two red candles are the pullback. So now we have a new swing high 
and a pullback all above our 50 period moving average. What's the next thing we look for? A swing low. How do we find that? A bounce out of price. After we get that swing low, which is by the way, right here, this is our swing low. We want the market to come down, test that area, and then give a green candle. And we want to try to capture the bottom of this pullback for the next move higher. So the way we do that, and we need rules for this as well, right? So the way I do that is by putting a box between the body of my swing low candle and the wick of my swing low candle. And this is where I need price to test. It can test this area with a wick. It can close in this area. A wick can go past this area. What I do not want to see is a candle that closes below this area. At that point, I have to start looking for new trades, either a new swing high and pullback or a new uh, swing low that I can look for a retest of. So with this being the case, what am I waiting for right now? As price is right here. What am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a test of this zone with price. Is this a test of this zone? Remember what I said, price can come into this zone, a candle can close in my zone. I just don't want a candle to close below it. So yes, we now have a valid test of our zone of structure. After we have that test, what's the, the entry itself? The entry itself is a green candle. So at this point, this is a good example of this trade on a real chart. We're looking at the market above the 50, creating a new swing high. Rules for a pullback are met. And our zone here is that first swing low between the body of the swing low candle and the low of the swing low candle is where we want the market to test. And then after that test, we are entering on a green candle showing us buying pressure and showing us that this market could, could be continuing in trend and breaking into new highs. That is the rules for the strategy. We're gonna take a look at about two other examples and I'm going to show you a bearish version, go through some of the nuances of the strategy. For instance, one of them is that we can't see something like this. I don't wanna see a new high and then a retest of this support level after we've already created a new high. All of this needs to happen below the previous high and above the 50 period moving average. Essentially what we're trading is double bottoms while in trend above the 50 period moving average. So with that being the case, let's just continue here on the Aussie yen, see what would have happened with that trade. By the way, that trade, we would have entered at the top of this market. I use a 1 ATR stop loss below the lowest low of either the first low, the first swing low, or the second one. With that being the case, ATR at the entry candle is 20 pips. So we have 31 down to that. 20 plus 32 is 52. And I normally shoot for about a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk. That trade would have been a winner. Next up, let's take a look and see what we're looking for. What do we have? We have a new swing high, right? After we get a new swing high, we want to see a pullback, which is at least two candles. We get that. After we get at least two candles, we're waiting on the market to come back down and do what? What am I waiting on at this moment right here? I'm waiting for price to retest what? This very first swing low. So I'm gonna put my, what I call termination zone on the screen, which my termination zone is between the swing low of this swing low, the actual low itself and the body of the swing low candle. At that point, what am I waiting on? The market to test this zone. What is considered a test of this zone? A wick can get into the zone. A wick can go past the zone. The body of a candle can be in the zone. The only thing that cannot happen is I cannot see a body close below this zone. So as long as that is the case, all I'm waiting for is that test and then what? And then a green candle. So with this right here have been a valid trading opportunity according to this strategy. If we count our, off our rules, we are above the 50. We did make a new swing high according to our last swing high. We had a pullback of at least two candles. We have our swing low and we have a retest of that swing low followed by a bullish candle, giving us confirmation that we could see this market continue into new highs with this uptrend. Now let's see where this market went. At this point, your entry, well, you can tell that it won. And I know you're, you're asking this, Steven, did you just point out two winning trades because you already knew that was going to happen. Isn't that hindsight? And the answer is absolutely. That first trade was hindsight and this one hindsight, but 
I actually placed this trade before this move ever happened. And I'll show you that if you look to the left, say, left side, one of these sides, if you look to the left hand side of your screen, I have an example of email analysis. This is an email I sent to traders on the 18th or 17th of February, explaining to them what I was looking at and my entry price, which you can see there, my exit price and my stop loss price. And as you can see, if I go over to that actual trade, it has done very, very well. This trade itself that you see on the screen was based on the exact strategy I just told you. So. As you can see, this trade was not exactly in hindsight as I did take it and send it to all the members of the EAP training program. And by the way, they get three to five of these type of trade alerts each and every week. Of course, not all of them are winners and especially not winners like this. You will have losses in trading no matter what, but if you are interested in learning some more advanced material than what I share here on YouTube, and if you wanna know the exact rules of all the strategies I use personally, along with getting three to five email alerts each and every week, and this is a mentorship program, meaning that any questions you have about trading, it'll be me personally answering those questions for you. And on top of all of that, the absolute best part of this is that there is a 60 day money back guarantee. So if you for any reason are not satisfied within 60 days of purchasing the EAP training program, just shoot my support staff an email and they will get back to you ASAP and send you a full refund of your purchase price. But that was our second example here of this specific trading strategy. Let's take a look at a bearish version so you have a full grasp on everything. And then we're going to talk about how having a strategy like this is not the only piece of the puzzle you need in order to be a successful swing trader, in order to not blow your account as a swing trader, and more importantly, or just as importantly, in order to be a long-term, consistently profitable, successful swing trader. So let's go ahead and dive into a bearish example now, and then we'll move on to the other important parts of trading. Okay, so for a bearish example, we are in a downtrend, and is this a new swing low? Yes, it is. We can see that we have now pushed down to a new swing low. We now have one, two, pull back candles at that point this is validated for me with this trading strategy as a pullback so at the point that we have a pullback what are we waiting on with a bearish entry we're waiting on selling pressure or a red candle and then a retest of that zone between the swing high high and the swing high body and then another red candle at that red candle it's where our entry goes stop above our highest high of the swing high targets for trend continuation. So let's take a look at what happened and kind of dissect this trading opportunity. There we have a red candle. So at this point, we're looking in this zone to see if we can get a green candle pushing back up and retesting this zone and then another red candle showing a selling pressure. We get a red candle, we get a green candle, we get another green candle and another green candle. At this point, have we broken out of my zone? Yes, we have. The body of this candle closing above my zone means that I'm no longer looking at, for a red candle at this point. Now I have to redo my entire analysis because this is no longer the swing high of the current pullback. This is because we have a higher high and a higher close. So now my box looks like this. And if we get a new higher high, then it's going to have to go higher. So let's just continue looking at price and dissecting this specific trade. Now we have red candle shooting down and this right here is my zone because this is my swing high candle the swing high of that candle down to the body we now have our zone that we want to see the market come up and retest let's see what happens oh we get a retest of that zone now what are we waiting for now i would be waiting on a red candle for selling pressure because at this point essentially I have I know it's not exactly a double top I'm just gonna call it that for simplicity's sake I have a double top while in trend to the downside all below the 50 period moving average one of the nuance rules is I cannot keep looking for this once candles close above the 50 period moving average once that happens I'm not considering this market in a strong enough downtrend for me to want to trade that strategy so that's one of the nuance rules you need to pay attention to and you need to test for yourself. All of this needs to be back tested. We are gonna talk about that plenty in just a second. Now, what are we waiting on? We're waiting on a red candle. Boom, there's my red candle. How does my trade setup look? Looks like this, I have an entry there, one ATR on my entry candle, and if you're not sure what ATR is, it's right up here. In the top left-hand side of my screen, you can see ATR 
It's an indicator on every trading platform. Go to your indicators, type in ATR. You will find it. I have it with all the regular settings. So at the point of my entry, the ATR is 94. What that means is I would need a 94 pip stop loss, and I want that stop loss above our previous swing high. So up to our previous swing high is 88, plus 90 would be 178, plus 4 would be 181. So we have 181 pip stop loss, and we are looking at a target at a 1.4, which is what I like to personally use. And let's hit play, see what the market did. Push down and finally hit targets. Let's take a look at one more bearish example, and then we'll move on. Okay, so here we are making new swing lows yet again, right? We have a swing low. We have more than two red candles. We have a swing low and a pullback all below the 50 period moving average. Everything's lining up for a possible bearish trade using this strategy. So now we are waiting on a push down, right? Push down with a red candle and then a retest of that zone and then another red candle. Those were the worst candles I've ever drawn in my life. But with that being the case, let's click play and see what happens. There's our red candle. Now we have our zone that we are looking for a retest in. And once we get that retest, we want confirmation with another red candle. So let's keep pushing and see what happens here. We get our retest. That's not a red candle yet. We get higher. Here we go. Continuing. Oh, actually that is our red candle right there. So the reason that is a retest and a red candle for confirmation is because we are still inside of my zone. We didn't close above it. We closed inside of the zone and we did have a wick that went above it, but that's totally fine. We do have candlesticks touching the 50, but have we closed above the 50 period moving average? No. So everything's valid about this trade and this red candle would be the entry. Let's go ahead and do that. 214 on stops would put a 1.4 about the same spot. Okay. Let's click play and see what happens. <gasps> Holy shit. It lost. Yeah, guys, it lost, and I did that on purpose. I, I just wanted to show you one losing trade so you understand that it's not some holy grail. No strategy ever will be. This is just something that has provided me with an edge over the market in the past years of my trading. It's a simple, rules-based way to make really accurate trading decisions while swing trading in any market. And it's very logical. You're trading with the trend. You're using structure and candlestick patterns in order to try to capture the end of a pullback before that next impulsive move up or down while the market is trending. But here's the bad news. You can know this strategy like the back of your hand and you still could end up blowing your account or not making money as a trader or wasting your time trying to do this or losing a shitload of money. Why and how is that if this is a strategy that provides an edge over the market and makes money over time? Well, there's a lot more factors that go into trading successfully, whether you're day trading or swing trading, than just the strategy that you have. And I don't want you to leave this video thinking that the strategy is all you need. And for that reason, let's dive in to the other parts of trading you will have to master if you ever plan to be a successful swing trader. I like to break this down in something I call the millionaire trader checklist. And what this is, is eight steps that you must take before you will ever start making money in any financial market, including the Forex market. So let's dive into these eight things that you must check off before you start trading live, starting with understanding the basics of the market that you are trading in. So if you're trading in the Forex market, that would be understanding what the Forex market is what a currency pair is, what a pip is, how the market moves, how to go long and how to go short, how to place a stop and a target, understanding the way to take a trade in your brokerage account would all fall under the category of basics. Luckily, I have a full video on the basics of Forex. I'll put it in the top right hand corner of the screen. It's like an hour long, but it does go through everything you're going to need in order to master the basics of Forex. Next, you will need to master technical analysis. And I know my handwriting is awesome. Technical analysis, would be understanding a candlestick chart, would be understanding indicators, moving averages, price action patterns like double tops and bottoms, candlestick patterns like engulfing, hammer, shooting star. You need to understand, at least to a certain degree, all aspects of technical analysis. That would all fall under category number two. And the reason you must do this is because we're going to use a combination of these technical factors to create the next step, which is to create or learn a strategy. Now in this video earlier, I taught you an entire strategy that's rules based 
and that has provided an edge over the market for me. You don't have to go create your own. I have plenty of strategies on our channel and there's plenty of other strategies out there. You can learn one. And the good news about this is that these three steps should literally, if you start from scratch, from brand new, these three steps should take you less than two weeks if you have enough time to put into it. Two weeks to a month max, you should be able to master the basics, master technical analysis, and have a strategy that's rules-based and that provides an edge over the market. But the only way to know if said strategy does provide an edge over the market is to backtest, which is step number four, or number four on this checklist is to backtest that strategy. So your strategy is going to be a rules-based approach to every single time you trade based on a number of technical factors. That's why we need to learn technical analysis first and then learn or create a strategy. And then we backtest that strategy to ensure that it's profitable, even if you learned it from a pro trader like myself, you still need to go test it to be sure it's profitable and be sure you're seeing the market in the same way I am. And there's no other way to see if this said strategy was profitable in the past 100 trades other than testing it in the past 100 trades, right? And if it hasn't been profitable in the past 100 trades, the likely scenario is that it won't be profitable during the next 100 trades. And we also backtest, not just to ensure that a strategy is profitable, but also to practice that strategy and train our reticular activating system to see that specific pattern on a chart, to see all of our technical factors coming together on a chart more quickly and more easily because acting fast, even in swing trading is really important in trading. So you want to make sure you go through your back testing to practice and ensure your strategy is profitable. And the third reason we back test is to help with number four and number four is optimize. You now have a strategy that is rules based that you are back testing. You need to be optimizing that strategy. You can optimize for a infinite amount of things, but the three things I like to look for most is I optimize for the best currency pairs that this strategy works on because some currency pairs act different than others. Therefore, some currency pairs are going to perform differently with a certain strategy than others will. I also like to optimize for stop and target placement to ensure that I'm getting the most out of my reward to risk ratio on every strategy that I'm trading and on every pair I optimize for risk to reward ratio because some pairs move more than others. Those are the three things I look at. Some other things you may want to look for while optimizing is what time of day does your strategy work best in? What period of the year, how many, what months does it work best in? You see what I'm saying? There's infinite possibilities in terms of app optimizing, but the three that I just told you are the ones that I personally look for. Now, doing this is impossible if you don't take the back testing step first. Hopefully you're seeing a pattern here. Every one of these needs to be checked off in order. And now that we're done optimizing, let's say you have your rules-based strategy, you've back tested it, you've optimized it, you've picked six currency pairs, you plug all those numbers into a spreadsheet, and then based on those results, based on the total number of losses in a row you have, based on the max drawdown that you see, based on historic data and back testing, you then have what you need to help you create a risk management plan. So number six on the checklist is creating a risk management plan. And since you've done all the other steps, you now have the information you need to do so. So if this strategy, let's say, performed at a 60% win rate and gave you a time when it had five losses in a row, then if that's what happened in the past 100 instances the strategy performed or the strategy happened in historic data, then it's likely that you're gonna have five losses in a row again during the next 100 trades. So the way you would go about creating a risk management plan is asking yourself with those five losses, how much do I need to risk each trade to stay comfortable during drawdowns like that, to stay out of my emotions, to keep from making big mistakes, and, and most of all, to keep from blowing my account during those types of losses? Because that's the two things that a risk management plan does. First off, it keeps you from blowing your account. And not that it, you can't blow an account with a good risk management plan, you can, but it makes it much, much, much more difficult to blow an account if you're risking a small amount of your account per trade. It also keeps us out of our emotions. If you, for instance, 
right now when you place a trade and you win the trade, you feel like you hit the lottery, you're jumping up and down, you're, you're telling your spouse or all your friends that you're gonna be the next Bill Gates and you're gonna be the next Warren Buffett. I said the wrong name there. But if that's you, and then when you lose, you're droopy, bad mood, borderline depressed, then that means that the amount of money you are losing and winning during trades is too much. Not that the amount of money you're winning is too much. I get that that sounded stupid, but that means you're risking too much because the amount of money you're losing and it really, it means you're risking too much because of how emotional you are about these numbers in your account. And that means you need to reduce the risk in your risk management plan. And all of this is done preemptively by doing all the back testing. If you're risking too much, I guarantee you haven't back tested and optimized a trading strategy and created a risk management plan around it. So that's your steps in this checklist, right? That's the next steps for you. Next, after you create a risk management plan, is something that is so widely argued by professional traders, it's not even funny. Some say that it's absolutely useless. Some say it's necessary. I'm on the side that says it's absolutely necessary, but let me explain why. Let me actually say what it is first. Demo trading is the next step. Now, I know there probably is half of you going, demo trading doesn't give me any emotional stimulus, so why would it be like practicing trading? Well, you don't wanna risk money if you don't know if this rules-based strategy can actually be used in real market data. So the reason we're demo trading is to make sure you can actually accomplish the strategy. You can place the trades you need to place even with your prior obligations, like having a job, like having kids to look after, like sleeping. You wanna make sure that all of your trades don't happen while you're asleep. You wanna make sure they don't happen while you have those prior obligations. You wanna make sure that you can actually perform the strategy. You also are gonna demo trade because if you're using market orders, what you didn't account for in your backtesting is something called spread. And you need to make sure that that spread doesn't make your strategy just completely irrelevant and lose the profits that you could have made. I'm not saying demo trade forever. I think it's so stupid for people to discount demo trading like it doesn't do anything. Demo trading shows you all of that. It shows you, and you don't wanna risk real money wondering if you can actually trade the strategy you've done all this work to test you want to risk fake money. You want to demo trade. Plus, if you demo trade for a month and you see that you have made profit over that month, then your confidence in this strategy is going to be sky high. You've now created a rules-based strategy that you can accomplish, that you can use every single day in the markets because it's a set of rules that you're going to follow. You've optimized it for the best pairs. You're using correct risk management and you see in demo trading that all of that combines to actually give you profit in a month, your confidence is going to be through the roof and that confidence is necessary for step number eight and our final check in this checklist, which is discipline. You, at the end of the day, need to stay disciplined to all these rules. I know that it's so tempting to go chase the next GameStop or Dogecoin or AMC. I know it's so tempting to jump on the Bitcoin bandwagon. And I'm not saying don't do that at all. If you have a certain amount of money that you're willing to risk, or if you trade in crypto, by all means, go do that. But don't gamble. Even if you're doing that, at least have some kind of plan, have a set place where you want to get out of the market. Don't just put money in there expecting it to go to the moon. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But at that point, all you're doing is gambling. You can go to Vegas and gamble. And by all means, if you want to gamble with your money, that's totally up to you. I'm just trying to explain the steps you need to take to become a consistently profitable swing trader over a long period of time. Make it a career, not a try, not try to make it a get rich quick scheme. And these are the steps that you need to take in order to do that. So right now, if you are anywhere on this checklist, your next steps should be very, very obvious. If you are brand new, then obviously you need to start with the basics, then learn technical analysis and you need to go down the list. Let's say you're someone who already knows technical analysis, but you don't have a strategy yet. Good news, I just showed you a swing trading strategy earlier in this video. So with that strategy or with the technical analysis that you learned, you can now create a strategy based around a combination of technical factors. That would be your next step. If you already have that strategy, you have it back tested and optimized, you can see where I'm going with this, right? you can tell where you're at on this list. And on this checklist, if you need to write it down, write it down yourself on a piece of paper and check off the things that you've already accomplished. If you already know the basics, great. If you already know technical analysis, awesome. You have that strategy that I taught earlier in the video, but if you don't have a strategy, don't check it off. If you do have a strategy, cool. 
If you want to use that one from earlier or create your own or you have one from someone else, whatever. If you've already back tested, obviously you check that off and you would just go down the list and figure out where you are and what your next step should be in terms of risk management. If you're like I was saying earlier and you're someone who's freaking out emotionally, whether they win or lose a trade, your emotions are peaks and valleys, then you need to adjust your risk management plan if you've already done all these and God forbid you've done none of these and you're trading live right now. God forbid you haven't done every one of these and you're trying to trade with real money. I can't I can't tell you what to do with your money. I will just say, please take a step back and accomplish all of these things. Trading's not easy. Accomplishing all these things is not going to be easy, but if you set your mind to it, you can do it in less than three to six months. And at that point, your chances of becoming a consistently profitable swing trader go from down here to up here. Not even just swing trading, any type of trading that you do. And an easier way, a more simple way, I guess you could say, that I like to do this is with something I call the triangle of trading success. A lot of you may have already seen this if you've seen our channel for a while. This triangle looks like so, like a regular triangle, right? Inside of it is all of the profitable traders that are actually making money. On the outside are the things they had to accomplish in order to make that money. The last section we just looked at with that checklist, it was kind of broken down a little bit more complicated, not even more complicated, almost in a more comprehensive way, but they all must have a strategy or way of trading that produces them with profit over long periods of time. They all must have a risk management plan that keeps them from getting emotional in trades and from blowing their accounts. They all must have the discipline to stick to those two things. So if you can accomplish all three of these, then you will be in the money with your trading. It's inevitable. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed that beginner lesson, but if you are ready for some more advanced training, then we just had a few graduates come out of the EAP training program, our flagship program here at the Trading Channel. I'll post some of their testimonials on the screen. And that is incredible news for them. And that's also incredible news for you because that means that we finally have some spots available in the EAP training program. And while you glance through some of the comments on the screen, I want to tell you that if you're struggling to profit right now, then I've been where you are too. I struggled for over a year before I found a way to be consistently profitable. I made every mistake you can think of. I moved stops. I used poor risk management. I traded strategies that didn't work. I followed a signal service that ended up with me almost blowing my entire account. But after that first year, and after nearly blowing an entire account, I found the real path to trading success. And consistently profitable trading became as easy as counting to six. And that is what I teach in the EAP training program. I created a strategy that only uses six simple rules to create an edge over the market. So once you memorize these rules, trading becomes as easy as counting to six. These rules are completely objective and easy to follow. And although just having a strategy is only one part of the equation, it is a very large part of that equation. In the EAP training program, we also have lessons on risk management and discipline to make sure that you have everything you need to get on the right track to becoming a consistently profitable trader. And here's a look at some of the things that are included in the course. As you can see, we have beginner lessons that teach you everything you need to know about technical analysis in terms of what you're going to learn in the course. We have a transition course, which is meant to take you from where you are to becoming consistently profitable. And after that, we have an advanced course that is meant to take your trading to that next level. We also send out three to five email alerts every week. These are not meant as signals. Let me clarify that but instead meant to show you exactly how I am looking at the market. And we also do a review video at the end of every couple of weeks to show you how the strategies are performing. And you can check those out right here. So if more advanced training is something that you are looking for, then we do have a few spots available in the EAP training program. This program also comes with priority email, meaning you can email me at any point that you have questions and I will answer you ASAP. So if a trading mentor is something you are looking for, then look no further. Go ahead and click the link in the description for the EAP training program, and it would be a pleasure to have you aboard and to have you join us in the EAP training program. If not, that's totally fine too. Make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Make sure to click that like button for me if you enjoyed this video. Follow us on Instagram at The Trading Channel. 
and I will see you in the next video.